Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Spoiler Spotlight. We're slowly reaching the end of spoiler season, but there's still some good ones in this episode, so let's get started. The first card on our list is Aegis of the Gods. It's a simple 2 1 for 2, and it's also an enchantment creature, but more importantly, it has the very nice ability of You Have Hexproof. Usually, this ability appears on 4 casting cost enchantments in white but having this on a creature means that on the one hand you get it out much quicker, but on the other hand this effect won't last forever because your opponent will draw some removal at some point and get rid of your Aegis, but uh, yeah, if they use their removal on your 2-drop, you're usually fine with that, so that's nice. And uh, meanwhile, you get to hose your opponent if they have thought seizes they didn't use, or maybe against burn they're forced to use it on your Aegis, instead of being able to point it at your face. So a very nice card, and I'll expect this to at least see sideboard play. Next up is another cycle of enchantments. These are the down payment enchantments, so you get them into play for a pretty low cost, and for an additional cost you can sacrifice them and get an effect. I think the only important ones here are the blue one and the green one, the blue one being a slow divination, and the green one being a slow rampant growth, but if you can fit them into an enchantment deck where playing an enchantment is beneficial to you, then they might see some fringe play. Harness by Force is the act of treason in this set, and it's a pretty cool one because it also has Strive, meaning you can target multiple creatures if you have the mana for it. If you combine this with some sort of sack outlet, where you can sacrifice the opponent's creatures after attacking with them, then uh, you could maybe build a deck around it, but usually Act of Treasons don't see playing constructed, but in Limited this will be winning some games for sure. Bearer of the Heavens is a badass card. For 8 mana you get a 10 10 giant, and when Bearer of the Heavens dies, destroy all permanents at the beginning of the next end step. So this does include lands, but there is a way to circumvent that, and that's by playing Boros Charm, during the turn that the bearer dies, so you save all your permanents, but your opponent loses all of his. Golden Hind is an interesting mana accelerator, as it's got higher power than toughness. It won't be replacing Elvish Mystic anytime soon, but once it rotates, it's still competing with Voyaging Seder and Sylvan Caryatid for the 2-drop slot, and I think the Voyaging Seder will almost always be better for you. But if your deck is a little more aggressive, then maybe having a 2-1 instead of a 1-2 could be relevant, in which case the Golden Hind might see some play. And of course Sylvan Caryatid is the best one of all three. Dictate of Heliod is the fourth Dictate revealed so far, and I think it's one of the more powerful ones, because giving your creatures plus 2 plus 2 at instant speed not only messes up combat for your opponent, but just turns every creature you have into a massive threat. White weenie decks could use this at the top of their curve, although 5 mana can still be too expensive for those decks, but if you're lucky enough to open this in a limited environment, I'm sure you will win most games where you resolve this. Eidolon of Rhetoric is a 1-4 enchantment creature, and its effect is the same as Rule of Law, which already sees play in sideboards in Modern, so I'm sure that Eidolon could replace Rule of Law in most of those decks, as Lightning Bolt doesn't even kill it, and having a 1-4 to attack and block with can be worth the risk of losing your enchantment. Daring Thief is another creature with Inspired. It's a 2-3 for 3 mana, which is not really exciting, and its Inspired ability is pretty difficult to really abuse, because your opponent has to have a permanent with the same type as the permanent you have that you want to exchange with it. On the other hand, blue does have a lot of effects to make your creatures unblockable, so maybe if there's a way to abuse the Daring Thief, it might be worth it. Battlefield Thaumaturge, on the other hand, is an exciting card. For 2 mana you get a 2-1, but that's not everything, because each instant and sorcery spell you cast cost 1 colorless less to cast for each creature it targets. And in addition to all that, he also has Heroic, which gains him Hexproof until end of turn. So let's take a look at some cards that work nicely with him. Glimpse of the Sun God allows you to tap all your opponent's creatures. 
Dauntless Onslaught, just for one white you can target two of your own creatures. And of course all the Strife cards become a lot more interesting if you have the Thaumaturge out, as Polymorphous Rush only costs one blue to target an additional creature, and Launch the Fleet becomes completely free to target all the creatures you have. Disciple of Deceit is a 1-3 for one blue and a black, it also has Inspired, so when it untaps, you basically get to transmute a card in your hand, which was the original the mirror mechanic. So this basically means you get to search your library for a card with the same casting cost as a card you discarded. So it's a little conditional, it's not really card advantage, but it could be card selection for those control decks that require a specific answer to a problem, but it all requires a little too much work to really make it worth your while. Desperate Stand has some awesome art, but the card itself is not very good. It costs 1 run at a white to give a creature plus 2 plus 0, first strike and vigilance, which would be okay for a combat trick if it were an instant, but this is a sorcery, and the strife cost of 1 red and a white to target an additional creature doesn't really help this card out a lot, so this won't see any constructed play, and even in limited, I'm not even sure you would main tag this. So that's it for today, I wanna thank you for watching and have a nice day!